Are you or someone you know about to start the college process? Then today's episode is for you. Stay tuned. You're listening to Triangle's Making Money Personal Podcast, where we engage in real talk about financial matters that affect our community. Today's episode is sponsored by Triangle Credit Union, recently voted best credit union in New Hampshire. Welcome to the Making Money Personal Podcast. Our guest today is Becky McLennan. Becky is currently the Director of Finance and Administration at the University of New Hampshire. In this episode, we talk about college planning, financial aid, and scholarships that are available to students that are looking at higher education as an option after high school. Becky has a wealth of information in this area, having both worked in education and helping her own children through the college process. We think you're really going to enjoy this episode, especially if you or a loved one is currently in or about to begin the college experience. Now to the episode with Becky. All right, we're live. Welcome, Becky. Thank you. It's great to be here. How are you? I'm good. How are you? Good. Uh, Terry and I were really excited to have you on on today's episode. So what have you been up to lately? Oh, boy. Um, Lots going on, right? There's a lot going on. There is going on, but it's, it's. You know, I'm working remote, so uh, super busy with work. I am work for uh, a higher ed, I work for a university, and yep. we're wrapping up the semester, and I work in uh, finance and administration, so the end of the year, the end of the contracts, the budget, a lot of different things going on. On the flip side, on my personal side, it's been, it's been uh, really cool. We, we rehomed a dog. And so I get very busy with her. Our children are grown. So, uh, but one's in Denver, Colorado and our, that's our son and our daughter is in Maine. So she just moved over and getting anxious to uh, get outside and see her instead of being, being cooped up because of COVID. So COVID's COVID's thrown a little thorn into some things, but thank goodness. A lot of things. And for FaceTime and for, you know, all those good things that can keep you connected. Yeah, you for know, sure. Yeah, that's what for that's sure. what counts. So the other day, I I was on a call earlier today, and um, I had to share this because I think this is probably the best news ever. I was reading an article the other day, and it started off in a post-pandemic era. I was like, oh, post-pandemic. Doesn't that sound great? Oh, that sounds great. I can't wait till we get back to normal. I can't wait. I, know, I have so yeah. many face masks hanging from anything in my car. <laughs> what, what are you going to do with those face I masks? Know. And my whole thing. Light them on fire? fire? <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> you have yes. to coordinate them too. I mean, you got to be, you know, it's like, okay, so, you know, and, uh, I have purposely, honestly, on the face mask thing, I've kind of gone back and forth and like, should I buy one that's like more me? And I'm like, no, I'm not going to buy anything that's going to, I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to, you know, I'm like, I'm just going to do the little paper ones or whatever. I'm like, yeah, yeah. I'm not going to spend extra money on these, but yeah, yeah it kind of goes back and forth. I know. Mm-hmm. It's so true. And then it's like, okay, I've got to wash them now. And then it's like, because I, I went with the cloth ones and it's like, okay, I've got to wash these. And it's like, okay, where are they? I always keep one in my glove box though. Right. Yes. Yeah. Right. Yeah. It's, yeah. it's definitely, it's definitely a pain, but hopefully it seems, it seems like there's light at the end of the tunnel. Um, I, I just don't know how much longer this tunnel is. So we'll, I know. We'll see. it's like a little speck. So yeah. We'll see. Yeah. It's nice to see the numbers going down. It's nice, nice, nice sure. to have the, the weather. Yes, so for sure. For sure. Get out. Yeah. yeah, I know. Huh? It'd be, oh, can't wait to get into a room with somebody. I know. <laughs> or, I know. Besides your new dog. <laughs> seeing people's faces. I mean, that's one of the things for me, like just going to the grocery store and I can't mm-hmm. see people's faces. So I know. it's um, it's sad almost. It is. Me. And I feel so bad for the kids. But yes. Like, I get up really early in the morning, so I see the buses, which is great, but it's like, yeah. they're, they're so cute, but I'm so glad right. they're on the bus, and I'm so glad they're going to school. And, oh, me too. You know, and I'm I... glad they have, you know, for parents, too, you know? And, yeah. yeah. What a shift. I mean, we're lucky. My daughter it's just grown. Started... We don't have the young ones home that couldn't yeah. go to daycare, couldn't go, right. you know. Yeah. My daughter just started back up two weeks ago on the 19th, so. Oh, really? She's in second grade, so. Oh, it's, wow. um, she's very excited. She was on vacation last week, as we talked about earlier, 
Yeah. And she was bummed out that she only went to school for a week and then was on vacation for another week. Oh. Um, so she was like, "What? what's this? You know? Yeah. So she was very happy to go back this week. So. Oh, good. Oh, so was yeah. that. It's so important. <laughs> they need that. You know, yeah. they're used to the mask, but they really need to. For sure. Need, for sure. Get with their other, with their peers. Yeah. Excellent. So oh, that's speaking so of schools, speaking, speaking of schools, of- Becky. Yeah. <laughs> how do, let's talk about how tricky the, you know, the college funding process is. Can, can we talk about that for a little bit? We sure can. I love talking about the college planning process. So I would, I would love to talk about it. I would, anything you want to talk about. I'm happy to share anything I know and what I can do to help. All right. Well, I'm going to ask the question Okay. because I just want to know, like, okay, I have one daughter who is a sophomore in college and she's actually going part-time. Um, but then I have a younger daughter who's going to be starting full-time um, in 2022. So I want to know how tricky is this whole college planning and um, how tricky can it be for us to navigate as far as you know, finding the financing and things like that? So the college planning process itself is necessarily tricky. It can be very overwhelming for sure, Um, but the scholarship process can be because there's so much out there and you yourself kind of have to do a lot of the work um, and to to search for it and to get those resources. And when I was doing it with my children, I was really fortunate because I was in higher education. So I could walk down the hall and talk to somebody in admissions and say, "How how do I do this? Where do I go? Um, and what is so nice now is that for, for you, for your daughter, um, the high school counseling office was really a real important stop for us. They have so much information that they are using to prepare the student um, for the process. And whether you're going to a two-year school or a four-year school, or if you're going into a vocational school, they can start that process and help you with it. They offer a lot of different programming. They offer, and they start earlier now. It used to be where, you know, you're talking about college and it's like, oh, I don't have to do anything until my senior year. I don't have to start applying until my senior year. But it's important to really start navigating the process in their freshman year. And and high schools are really getting more and more into that program. And the other thing too, is that whatever your child's interest is, um, you know, or to a college that they're interested, or even if, I mean, I know with the freshman year, they're not even thinking about that. It's more geared towards the parents. Take a look at some of the schools. Take a look at their prospective student web pages, and that offers a host of information. And then from there, they send you on a number of different places to go to and look for, and it's really helpful. But you should get your student involved too, your child involved, you know, because right. it, it's a team effort. And, right. uh, yeah. and, and it's all about planning. Well, let me ask you this, Beck. Were, were you said that you have two grown children. Were your, did you find it easy to have your kids engaged in this conversation? And, and at what age did you start talking to them? It was easy. I, I, uh, I'm, a, I'm a real proponent and advocate for education any, anywhere, anytime, and you can get it. Um, I had, uh, my children were good students. Um, they were well-rounded students. They loved getting involved. But so we started the discussion. It was always when they got into high school, it was always, you know, the next step was college. So they knew that college was in their future. Um, and they knew that there were opportunities and they knew that they had to, had to help, you know, find those opportunities and do well to take advantage of some of the opportunities and resources that were available. So we started those conversations in their freshman year, sophomore year, we got a little bit more detailed and then junior year, we ramped it up. Um, but it was a timing thing. You know, my right. daughter was like, boom, 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 where my son was like, I'm, I'm doing this this weekend. I'm like, uh, uh, <laughs> well, we, we really have to look at this this weekend. And, and, you know, of course, over spring break, you go and you visit all the colleges and that's not at all what he wanted to do. So sounds <laughs> yeah. pretty it typical. Like, <laughs> it does, doesn't it? It's like, okay, okay we're going to use two days. So we compromised a lot. But, right. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Now, aside from your children that you helped through the college process, have you helped anyone else outside of your family? Just my nieces. And I've yep. also, you know, for more immediate, but if friends and neighbors, you know, those kind of things are, 
the group of folks that were my kids friends and yeah. um you know their kids we all we were all in it together and yeah. the nice thing too is if they have programming where your child goes to high school um you get involved with the parents there i remember i went to uh eight o'clock financial aid program at the high school that my kids were at and i can remember saying wow i am dedicated because i am going to find out about financial aid at 8 a.m and uh wow. I found a lovely group of women um and parents i shouldn't say just women but they're right. mostly the mothers <laughs> Yeah, yeah, and it was great, and we 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 did it together um, through the rest of the course. We always touched base with each other, um, and it was a good network. Good, that's awesome. Yeah, we actually just came back from um, a, a road trip, and we went down to the Carolinas oh, nice. because my daughter's looking mm. at. Um, I saw the picture. Chemical engine. <laughs> Pardon me. I saw the pictures on Facebook. Yeah, yeah. So, she, so it was funny because you know, in addition to the school, we went to the local Plato's Closet, and I don't know if anybody knows about Plato's Closet, but it's a consignment store. Oh. So every 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 um, town or city that we went into, we would go to Plato's Closet and buy all of their uh, school swag there, mm. like at <laughs> you know a fraction of the place. So that's actually a good you know a good tip wow. for any parent listening. Yeah. Like, just go to your local Plato's Closet and get your swag there. <laughs> Um, but that's what we did. We just came back. We went, um, she's interested in chemical engineering. Oh, wonderful. So we went online, we looked at, um, you know, some of the schools she's more interested in, in Southern schools than staying local here in new England. And so we went to North Carolina state. Um, and really we, we went also to UNC Chapel Hill, but more out of just interest, you know, to see what it was like there. Um, because they don't really, I don't think that they have a good chemical engineering program. But then we went to Clemson uh -huh. and that was really like, she, it was so funny because it was kind of like UNH Durham. Like as you're driving into the campus, there's like nothing there, right? Like there's uh -huh. like fields, some cows. Uh -huh. And then all of a sudden it's like, you just drive into the campus and it's like, boom, it's almost like a small city. Is it? So it was really, it was, it was a neat experience. But here's the other cool thing about COVID is that um, you can't do a tour, right? Like, I don't know about um, UNH, Becky, but down there, you can't, there were no tours allowed. But what they had is they had these um, almost like uh, sandwich signs as you would, you're walking through campus uh -huh. and you had a QR code and you, you know, if you used your cell phone, you could grab the information from the QR code and a virtual tour guide would come on and talk about the engineering huh. program and then the engineering buildings and things like that. So it was like, you know, that was kind of like, that's a post COVID or right. maybe COVID world yeah. that we live in right now. But that was kind of a neat process. That is neat. You know, it reminds me, I mean, I, uh, it reminds me of, um, you know, if you go to like a museum or yes. you know, any kind of a, right. event like that, or, you know, maybe Disney World, you have the headphones and you can do the self-guided yes. pieces and it's like yeah. exactly whatever you want to learn about or not learn about and that's cool because then you yeah. can go at your own pace uh exactly yeah. you know some of those group yeah. tours too can be a little bit you know okay let's keep right. moving and you know <laughs> so it's yeah. nice. I, that's kind of a you know the, a little silver lining there too Right. I think that they, I do think that the schools have adapted that way, yeah. which is, it, it has been good, it is, you know? Yeah. At UNH, we did a virtual uh, uh, new student orientation program uh, in, uh, last year. And so we did a couple of videos for uh, some of the different things that, are, that we're responsible for, or we want to share with the students and perspective, the prospective students and their parents. And so that was kind of cool. And we did something similar to this. We did more of a I pretended I was the parent and uh, then the person I was doing it with pretended or, or was the, you know, UNH employee, the expert in that information. And so that was kind of cool. Yeah. We did like this little conversational skit. So that's nice. <laughs> it was fun, but it was like, that was that's our first thing into it. It was like last March. It was like, oh my God, we had to, we had to do a video. Right. <laughs> We're not going to be able to have this big fair and, and be with people. <laughs> I'm wondering what college is going to look like when my girls go to college. I mean, I'm still about 10 years away from that. Um, so I, I just wonder what college is going to look like, um, as mm. far as, you know, financing, yeah. whether college is even necessary at that point, um, for, you know, it's, it's I think it's going to be a whole different economy at that point. 
Um, so I'm interested to get your, get your aspect on that. What do you think college looks like in 10 years? Well, I really think that this, um, I think being able to pivot um, from a lot of those brick and mortar schools, the residential and piece of schools like that, being, having that opportunity to pivot into that island format is gonna, is gonna um, it exponentially will help them tremendously because there is that student you know, that, that prefers that online piece, but also with the residential experience. So yeah. for me, I really have mostly like a hybrid piece Right. Um, I really see this helping a lot of the, um, uh, you know, two-year schools, the, um, and a lot of, uh, um, pathways from those two-year schools to the four-year universities yes. and making, um, the transition into that, that, uh, college or university a lot easier. You know, I think, um, yeah. I think it's important that students, that the colleges are listening to the students and also for the professors. Um, you know, it, it helps if you can pivot, do a hybrid course and do an online or and also face to face, uh, you know, the continuing the continuing of the education process uh, is just more consistent and more fluid yeah, right. for the learner. Uh, and right. I think it's going to open up a, a even bigger world for the adult learner. Right. And also with like with my daughter, um, where she goes to school, they and just so I think we've had this conversation, Will, but. Um, she's a junior and this year she started for dual, like has all of her dual enrollment. So she will have the equivalent of one year done for mostly gen eds and things like that. Yeah. But, so now you, you know, fast forward into college and she, you know, she'll be going in, in theory as a sophomore. So, mm -hmm. you know, I would rather pay an extra $110 or whatever it costs me, uh, you know, for, for each class that she's taken as a dual enrollment now, rather than having to, you know, pay an extra year of college once she, once she gets there. Right. Yeah. That makes that's, sense. That's huge help yeah. for parents. It is. Uh, that was, and that's a great point, Terry, because, um, you know, a lot of times they're, they weren't as transferable as there once was because the mm -hmm. colleges wanted the students to take them there. And, but those dual enrollments are great. And you see more and more of the high schools doing that. Uh, right. My neighbor, uh, her son, dear friend of mine, her son, uh, like same thing. I almost had a year's worth of of, of credits um, yeah. towards wow. his four year degree, and that's huge. It's just right. no. So these are the things that you know also can help offset the cost of education, and right, right. you know, be, and that's the other thing too, the, the debt, the student debt, and that you know all of that. Every a lot of the other you know, universities are really becoming cognizant, and they have been. But uh, it's, you know, a good value of education. And, you know, of course, the, 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 uni the university system in New Hampshire, the schools here in, in uh, New Hampshire are, are remarkable and wonderful. Right. For so, those who want to stay in New Hampshire. <laughs> right. yeah. I know you're done. I know. She's like, yeah, it's, it has a lot. It's nothing to do with actual the educational, <laughs> right. you know, format yeah. or the um the level of education it's more about the climate and you can't change that you can't, so. you can't change that at all yeah hi guys here's a quick word from our sponsor ready for a new ride get the right financing for your new car or truck with an auto loan from triangle credit union we offer some great rates for vehicles of all types and model years with terms up to 84 months on newer vehicles for both purchase and refinance, you can get a great car with a great monthly payment. Visit our website and try the AutoSmart online search tool for an easy, hassle-free shopping experience. Search our local certified dealers for the right car at the right price, right from the comfort of your couch. Don't wait. Finance your new car or truck today with a Triangle Auto Loan and get ready to roll. So speaking of like financing and, and whatnot, you know, what are the, what are some things to look for when applying for scholarships and financing for, for college? So if we're looking for, and you're looking for scholarships, there are institutional scholarships. So if you're looking specifically at the college that your child is interested in, yeah. um, those, those are the things that you want to look at. Some of them, uh, and that too might be changing along the way. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, it's, for because you know there are merit-based academic you know um, different matrices that they use to make those right. awards, uh, but there are institutional scholarships, and so I would look 
for those. I would also look locally um, for any kind of educational scholarships. More and more organizations are really becoming more involved with, with um, the communities. And you'll be surprised um, at some of the different grants if you just do a little research if you're out, maybe the local convenience store is doing something that will offer, you know, a scholarship to a, some, a student for a specific reason, or, you know, maybe there's right. a, a different need involved. But um, so those sorts of resources are really helpful. When you get into, um, uh, aside from looking at the prospective student page and the financial aid page on the colleges that you're interested in, uh, there are also other resources in New Hampshire. Uh, New Hampshire Charitable Foundation has a wonderful uh, host of uh, financial um, scholarship information. Uh, there's a program um, that's often run through um, the, your high school's counseling office. Um, when my son was and my daughter went to it, it was called Destination College. Uh, that offers an entire day uh, of information and the whole college process and, and funding. Uh, the national ones are great uh, for those. They're a little bit more competitive because they are national, um, yeah. but not to not do them. You know, whatever your interest is too is what I often did with some of my neighbors. We, uh, my son is a musician and my daughter is a science uh, major. Um, she's graduating now, so she majored in science, nutritional. Um, she's a nutritionist and um, and now an instructional designer. So she, uh, we went online and we searched out different things of of anything to do with science and anything to do with music. And um, it was it was really exciting about what we found, you know, right. and what we could do. And so you think about it, if you write this essay and it's you get five hundred dollars for it, and it only took you an hour, it's like woohoo! It's five hundred dollars now. Yeah. Yeah, and sure. every little bit helps so anything right. along Absolutely. the way really really Absolutely. helps yeah and to go back so, to your point about um you know checking out your local institutions and local um like nonprofits and whatnot i know triangle not to toot our own horn we offer scholarships when we do our college night every year so that's that's another thing if you guys are listening and you're a member of triangle definitely keep an eye out for our college night that we do every year so Exactly. Um, we give away scholarships so. exactly and then also you know um part of the you know the financial aid process is you know the biggest part for me with the most the scariest part that i felt overwhelmed with starting the process was the fast you know everybody oh, took the application for financial aid oh, like, you know i, I don't miss that like, don't miss that yeah it's like no. <laughs> and every year you had to do it so it's yep. like it was my my, and, you know, we tried to get my children involved, but of course it was more of the information on the parents' side and everything. But uh, yeah. it was uh, January 1st every year. Right. <laughs> it's really come a long way, though, because everything yeah. stays and saves and unless anything really dramatically changes. Right. On the right Actually, back. yeah, we, we've gone through that a couple of That's times. That's the daunting um, process. And it, I will say this, from the time that my oldest daughter started the process until now it's actually become so much more efficient because they will take um electronically they can take information from your tax return mm -hmm. and automatically populate it over right. and then i think the last time that i filled out the fafsa it literally took me about maybe i don't want to say maybe 20 minutes 20 yeah. to 25 minutes yeah. i mean this was over 10 years ago 10 right. 13 years ago so yeah. it was a little a little bit different for me, especially mm -hmm. my parents didn't speak English. So they relied on me to get it done. And yeah. I had to get all the information from them that I didn't even know what it really meant at the time. And I had to input right. all that information for it. So it seems like you kind of alluded to, Becky, that it's more the parents' information. So I kind of think maybe the parents should be doing it. But yeah. um, in my case, I, I had to do it. Yeah. They actually do require that will though. It's like there, there's like almost a, a piece that the parent has to do. And then I do remember like Cameron had to come on and do a yes. portion of it too. Yeah. And then, and then actually she has to manage it after, oh, after okay. it's been inputted, it's like all communication goes to her 
and if there's any follow-up questions Mm -hmm. and um and i think that there's the reason for that is because that's when the colleges get involved they don't want to talk to so much to the parent they want to talk to the student right Right. and um so at that point that's that is good that the kids are involved at that point for sure right and like you said the whole thing with the bathroom and i do remember with my daughter that it was nice because like you could import the tax return and it was all seamless. But well, I remember with my son, it was I was had to do a lot. It was it was lengthy and it was like, okay, pull everything together. And then I had yeah. my fast I noticed that with my son's FAFSA folder, it was this thick and my daughter's was just like the folder with with her pin number on the inside. Like you said, it was all like I it was like that was a paperless process. Right. It was like one post note on the inside of the file that said, talk to mom. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I just had the date submitted. It was like, okay, lots right. of But, you know, speaking of what you just said about the students with, I know I'm sliding off topic a little bit, but that's a tricky part for most parents. Um, when I was, you know, the controller over at Daniel Webster years ago um, and in charge of the business office and student accounts. And so, you know, we were collecting the money. Um, yeah. yeah. Parents did not like the fact that I couldn't speak to them. So, mm-hmm. uh, you know, all of a sudden you have a student, you know, whether it's a two year, four year or vocational, all of a sudden you, that student, it is now their record. And that's uh, right. You know, the parents are like, wait a second, I'm paying for this. And, you know, we have loans and, um, but you can't yeah. talk to me. And I'm like, mm, no, but if your son or daughter signs this form, they can. So I remember when my, both of my children got into school, I was like, go to the registrar's office <laughs> or go to the business <laughs> office and you want to sign the waiver form. Yeah. <laughs> no. I want to have to talk to them. <laughs> yeah. No. That's really that's right. really a good point yeah. right there, Beck. Yeah. For sure. I think that's worth anybody tuning in right now is yeah. like sign that release yes. for of waiver it's or uh, information. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. Because yeah. I mean, there is you know, I mean, they do have to, and, and it's like a light switch. I mean, these all of a sudden they have moved from you know dependent, sort of independent, this you know senior year, letting the line out a little bit, and then puff. They get to right. campus and it's like, I don't have curfew. Yeah. I have this. I don't have that. Ugh. You know, and it's like, right. oh. <laughs> so it's a, it's it's a, a lot it's to me. Sometimes it's a little overwhelming for some and sometimes not. But uh, that's yeah. right. Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. right. I can't it's imagine. Exciting. It's totally exciting. Very, very exciting. I, yes. I can't imagine my kids yet. Going no, through. I know. Huh? Yeah. It's, uh, you will. You will, especially mm-hmm. when Bella turns about 15, you'll be like, oh man, she thinks she's 30 already. Uh, and then, like, yeah. it's going to be a natural. I mean, yeah, she process. does think she's 15 now. So that <laughs> yeah. makes sense. There you go. Uh, overnight camps help. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. That's a good point as well. Get of a little tax. So, um, Becky, I don't know if, um, if at UNH or, uh, you know, if other schools where you've, um, uh, you've worked, but I know that a friend, just um, her daughter just got accepted at Oklahoma University. And this was interesting because um, she said that as soon as her daughter was accepted, they assigned her a money management counselor. Have you ever heard of such a thing? Well, I actually am part of a financial literacy group at uh, UNH that I'm excited to be on. Um, I actually have recently uh, become a part of it. There's um, uh, a host of resources and also, you know, um, working with Triangle, they've been so supportive in the financial education uh, with the um, TRIO group. Uh, But there's also, um, what we have is a a, a, a wellness wheel and part of it is the financial wellness of the students. And so there are resources in there um, uh, that, our money management tools, which is really cool. And we're actually looking yeah. into a, another one um, for the upcoming year. But uh, yeah. it is exciting. So they do have all those those pieces um, available because they need that, you know? We were right. talking the other day about, you know, the budgeting and, and the planning. And this, it all comes into play with this because uh, and it helps us, makes everybody aware of, you know, the value of the dollar. Right. Well, I think too, like for... For the, this is what I said, and it wasn't. It hasn't been my experience, and but that's going to be the one of the first questions that I that I ask if my daughter, you know, if she does apply to Clemson or wherever she ends up going is, and you know, I talk to somebody from the man, money management team because I think it's the process of, um, from what I gather, it's the process of 
this is where your financing has come from, right? This is how much you're allotted. And it's, you know, the more you take out, you might have to return that someday, yeah. right? So it really comes down to, you know, how are you going to manage mm-hmm. that money? Some money is going to go through like a scholarship, you know what I mean? Yeah. So that's, that, that's a gift or a, or a grant or whatever, right? But some of the money has to be going to have to be paid back. So how does that, how is it going to get it paid back? And, you know, the more, just like yeah. us, right? In the mm-hmm. real world, the more we borrow, the more we have to pay back. Mm-hmm. Yeah. For sure. So I don't know. I just thought that that was, that was really neat. And um, yes, and we are familiar with the, like, you know, we're, we're helping where we can with the TRIO program and we're happy to do that. Yeah. So, you know, you know, any education that we can give these students while they're at UNH, yeah. you know, that's definitely part of our goal as well. That is, so. that is a super, that is a great um, point you just made about um, understanding what they're borrowing and mm-hmm. understanding that the differences between a loan and a scholarship and a grant and also the caps, because that was one thing that um, was very uh, evident in all the work I did with students um, was that they didn't realize that it was, you could only get so much. (laughs) So with those federal loans, there's only so much you can get every single year um, with those student loans. And then there's a little bit more you can get if um, you don't meet need or so on another, um, for another loan, you can get a little bit more, but those are capped. And so understanding, like you said, Terry, that gap also, uh, um, which is, of course, is, you know, what the FAFSA helps drive home, um, is to see what the cost of education is, what you can have for resources, what opportunities are there, and then also, you know, what, what would be the, the um, out-of-pocket expenses, so to speak. Yeah. And uh, right. so tr- um, working with the students, you know, they were just, you know, they would sign a paper, and sign a paper, you know, sign the loan, sign and, there were other pieces of paper that had to be um, processed to demonstrate that the student understand, understood that they were getting loans. So they had to certify it like their own loan and, yeah. and sign on the dotted line that, yes, I understand this is a $10,000 loan. And I understand that six months graduate, I am going to have to start uh, paying this back. And then there's that right. other piece, that other whole host of things with deferrals. And, oh, that would be a whole yeah. other topic. That'd be another great topic <laughs> on, the, on the back end. <laughs> You know, yeah. watch out for deferrals and watch out. But um, yeah, and and also, you know, obviously the 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 Stafford loans, the federal loans are, you know, lower rates than than the private loans, and to you know, carefully navigate that as well. Right. So when does that, I guess, education begin to let these students know what they're signing up for prior to actually signing up for it? Does that start in high school, their senior year, junior year? Is it up to the parents? Like, how does that work? You know, that's a great question. And, and that, again, is why I was, I was like, so happy that I was uh, working in higher ed when my children were going through this process. Because I, bet, yeah. I, I talked about it a lot, but I think, it's, I think it starts earlier now. You know, it used to yeah. be uh, in the fall of your senior year, you'd have financial aid night. And so a lot of the things would start getting in there. But I right. think now with with the interest and with what's involved, um, getting a bit of a uh, head start is is not uncommon. Um, you know, and and to the age group, like when you're a freshman in high school, you know, talking about loans. But if you equate it to that's you know nine cell phones or that's you know a car or that's um, so certain things, just to make it relatable. Um, right. I think I think any chance or any opportunity you have yeah. uh, to share with yeah. that. I got to be honest, I didn't know what I was signing up for when I went to college. Yeah. I, I, you know, I just signed the forms and I was able to go. Yeah. Uh, my parents helped me out tremendously, uh, mm-hmm. thankfully. Um, but I did have a little bit of student loan debt that I wasn't really expecting, if I'm being honest. Like after I graduated, I was like, oh, I have to pay that back, you know? So luckily, you know, I was able to. And my par- like I said, my parents helped me out tremendously with that. And... I, I can't even yeah. imagine having all this student loan debt right now. Um, it's, oh, yeah. yeah, it's it's just remarkable what 
uh, and you know, I hear some of my friends with the, the kids right. that graduated, and and a lot of times, you know, you know, the students, you know, they'll move home, but they don't want to stay at home. But it's like, you know, when my son moved back, it was like he moved back home for like seven months, and we charged him rent, but we kept it all and we gave it right back to him for student loans. That's awesome. Well, so it was like, you know, things, yeah. you know, there, and it, it's as much as they want to get out and stuff. It's it's, it's a good way because of of some of the sizable loans that some of the students have to take, you know, yes. um, they can cut down, they can make a big chunk on it, you, right. know? Yes. you know, in one year, you know, just focus on paying back your student loans and live at home and yeah. just one year, you know, hunker down. Yeah. Yeah. For sure. Yeah. You know, but it is, it's true. They, they, it's, it's when you see it on paper, it's like, oh. right. Right. Yeah. It's scary. So uh, Becky, I wanted to um, ask you a question. We, you know, uh, Will had alluded to the, um, the college night that Triangle offers, and that's usually in October. Mm. Just a, another sh shameless plug for that. So <laughs> keep, keep looking for that on our on our website. But um, we do typically bring in uh, New Hampshire Higher Education Assistance Foundation, the representative from there yeah. from NEF. So, what's your experience with NEF? Do you work with them, or you know, have you had any experience with them? It's so fun. We were talking about the New Hampshire Charitable. The other the other one that I was. Uh, had uh, written down was me. Um, yeah, great resource. Yes. Unbelievable resource. Um, in fact, that was the first one I written down, but my eye caught the, <laughs> <laughs> the charitable foundation. Um, but yeah, definitely. I think it's uh, it's remarkable. They do a tremendous amount of work. Um, mm. An amazing resource. Uh, and if you, you go on their website and it's it's just for everyone. Uh, easy to navigate, easy to understand. They, uh, you ask the question, and and um, they've got a response. Uh, right. So, uh, when when we market that particular event, we actually market it to to any teen club member, their parents, and things like that. I encourage anyone of at least starting off as a freshman. What would you say? Would you say that's a good time to start plugging into the teen club and to to um, the, to, to Neef as a resource, or would you say earlier, or like, what's your experience there? Yeah, you know, someone told me yeah, eighth grade, and I'm like, mm, I, I, I think freshmen. I think get them when they're getting into high school, you know, because yeah. that next, they're 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 starting their high school track because they have college or they have you know their um, those services um, uh, on their horizon. You know, they're yeah. they have they're looking towards their next step as well. Right. In addition to all the sports and, and right. the pieces that they want to do, right. you know, and they have all those meetings with their counselor and, you know, they start that, that planning and, right. uh, and that's what it's really, you know, about. And so NEEP is an amazing resource. We used a calendar and it was, uh, you know, for everything. And it was, and we also had a yardstick and it was like, you build this yardstick and you are set for life. And we call it the yardstick of life. And uh, wow. you know, you've got three feet to capture, and boom, then you're set for life. So, um, you know, the senior year is a blast. The kids want to have fun. They worked so hard, and they've planned it so they can take a couple of easy courses in spring semester. And you know, so by Thanksgiving, our son and, and our daughter, you know, it was like you have to have all your college applications done. And that was before the Common App, where you just pushed a button and you applied for the college. Parents right. don't realize it, but you're going to have an application fee for each one of those too. <laughs> it's like, all of a sudden, it costs a thousand dollars for my, our children to apply to ten schools. You know, so wow. <laughs> so we we kept that count down as well. But you know, your your high school counselor uh, will yeah. advise you better. But yeah, and then Thanksgiving was great. They got and all we had to do is sit back and wait. And, right. uh, so, so tell me a little bit more about this yardstick, because this is the first time I've ever heard of, of using, but it's a great visual, <laughs> right? Is. I mean, yeah. for any kid. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. so how did that start? What, like, when did you start the yardstick and what kind of then we um, started measurements? In middle school. Okay. You know, just like kind of like planning, like, you know, what you do in this yardstick is going to set you for life. So, you know, it is also a tool to stay on the track, you know? Yes. <laughs> You want to go that way, <laughs> you know, right. the way that, you know, you find out that, you know, you're, you know, which path am I on? So it helps. Right. It's kind of like a, it's a nice little guide. 
It, you know what's interesting though? It sounds to me like your daughter who has a scientific mind and probably very linear thinking could understand that. Whereas your son is more artsy yeah. and he's probably like, I'm not going to follow what a yardstick is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. I think I gave it to him. I'm like, oh. that we gave him a talking stick. You know, okay, now I'm talking. Now you can talk. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, he was a musician, of, and they're both free spirits and both so independent, which of course is what you want. And, and the yardstick yes. helped too with the choices and things like that. Yeah. You Do know? you still have That's the yardstick it. or one of the yardsticks around? <laughs> no, but I still have his posters from high school with uh, yeah. <laughs> when it came down to prom time. And every time he sees it, he's like, why do you still have it? Yeah. Like, it's adorable. <laughs> right. <laughs> so it sounds like all this yardstick and planning and you know when to do what it sounds like a lot of time management it sounds like time management is very important so can we talk about that a little bit how important is time management oh it's critical it it is and and i will say that is once you get in a routine and that's again where my calendar came in uh you know just to plan and carve out a little piece of time um and the biggest piece is is for the student in their senior year um during the course year and finding things and looking at the calendar and planning when to go to colleges um so much now can be done online and so even over your coffee you know browse through a few pages keep things together i had a five subject notebook because that happened to have been the number of colleges that um each of my children wanted to um uh, go to so it was like each section had was a different college um, right. or university. And so that was helpful. Um, but time management is, is really important. Um, and more so for the student, especially that, that senior year, because there's so many time sensitive deadlines. Right. So if they can see it visually, you know, this is what we yeah. have to have it done, moving backwards. Kind of like when we were, I don't know if you all did it with your uh, studying for exams. It's like, okay, yeah. the final is, is next week. That means I, if I need to, <laughs> I have to yeah. move backwards. So I have to start studying now for. Right. Okay. right. Yeah. So that was, that was it, it is, it, it, it's, and so for some people, you know, it's, it's not their gig. And um, yeah, I've talked about the calendar enough, but that's where that came into. Yeah. And now no, that's everything's a great... on your phone. You can do everything electronically, you know? Yeah. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> that helps. That's right. You know, so Beck, we are we're uh, we're about to wrap up. So, is there any last pieces of of information or advice that you would give to any of our listeners? Oh, I would just say enjoy it. it mm. Don't get too overwhelmed. It's supposed to be an exciting time, and there will be hiccups. And but nothing that's going. I don't. It, we missed a couple of things. It didn't create a crisis. You know, planning. Um, but enjoy it. You know, it shouldn't be a. a a burden or an unhappy thing. This is exciting. This is yes. you know exciting for the family, whether it's a first generation student or fourth generation. It's 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 their time, you know. It's yeah. a big yeah. milestone. It's exciting and and just enjoy the ride with them. There's going to be speed bumps, you know. I can remember, you know, uh, oh boy, even way back to when I was applying, you know, I used two different colored pens. I thought my mother was going to kill me. <laughs> but you know with my son and daughter you know my husband and i you know we just we, we it was uh we were patient um we set some ground rules but just, yeah. just really enjoy it this is this is it's fun visiting the campuses were a, was a blast yeah yeah those you have to plan for right yeah, yeah. right Try to do just... days where nobody else is around and maybe they're scheduled right. a little light at school and you guys can take off take a day off of work if you can or Right. Yeah. It just reminded me, well, made me think of a question. How was the college planning process different when you were growing up, when you were planning to go to college versus today? Oh, wow. What a great question. Um, it's, it's, uh, you know, I'm, the process was pretty similar. Except really? it was, it was really, it took a long time because nothing was yeah. online. Right. Um, yep. So the right. research and the writing the, and the essays were really hard. Yeah. Those were really hard. And the application was, um, but uh, I remember my advisor in high school was, you know, we were all new, you know, what our steps were. We all were, you know, in the mode of 
playing and going to college and we geared our courses that way and what our interest was. That was the biggest thing, especially yeah, if you right. don't really know when you're a freshman what you want to be, and, right. you know, when you go up. Um, and so that was tricky. I started, I went out, I went to school to be a nurse. So mm. I uh, <laughs> ended up in business, which was great. So that for me, yeah. it was really good because I right. was able to slide into another major. So right. changing your mind is okay. But um, sure. I, I have to say, that's thing. a great question. Boy, I mean, it's, it's, you know, you apply and you visited the schools, um, yeah. you know, uh, interviewing, oh, the interview, the interview process. It's probably... I, I honestly, I can't, my son had an audition. My daughter went on tours and met briefly with a couple of people. I yeah. can remember having, being called for an interview. Like yep. you, you had to go in for interviews. You didn't get wow. called. It was not a good sign. Yep. Wow. Like, yeah. We're about the same for... age Beck, and I, and I, that was exactly my, my experience as well. And as you were, when, when Will asked that question, I was like, what was mine like? And it was exactly, as soon as you said that we didn't have the resources that were available today, because we, because the internet wasn't really a thing, right? We right. didn't invent the internet <laughs> and it wasn't available. And, um, and then, but, but to me, it was all about um, the, the, the school counselor yeah. because I grew up in, in Northern Maine and my school counselor, I had been accepted to a couple of colleges in Bangor. And, you know, they were good colleges and everything, but she knew what I wanted to do in life because we had had that a pretty good long conversation about it. And she was like, Terry, you need to get outside of the state of Maine. This is where you need to go. And she actually was the one who said, you need to go. You know, I want you to apply here, here and here. There were three colleges outside of Maine in addition to two in Bangor. And, um, and that's how I ended up in, in Nashua, New Hampshire. But it was wow. like the, re the, the resources came from that guidance counselor yeah, yeah. they yeah. they and what's nice is you know it's your it's your it's your counselor for all four years so they know you. yes and when it yeah. comes time yeah. to applying they they sometimes the parents disagree but uh right you know they 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 uh they have a sense of the student they know the student they've been intimately involved with the student through their course selections through their right. through their years and sports and all their academics and so yeah I and they don't have the things. emotional that that emotional tie that the parent will have yeah. to back right? it's like you know what i mean like they're they're seeing it from a different perspective mm -hmm. so um no yeah. i i definitely agree with yeah. that yeah. yeah that's good okay we have one last segment and this is kind of new i know that you listen to our podcast but i don't know if you've listened to it lately because we added it's called rapid fire oh goodness okay <laughs> so this is, um, I'm going to ask you, um, I'm going to give you choices. Like I've, I've, there's 10 questions or choices. You can't think about it. You only just answer whatever first comes to mind. Okay. Okay. You ready to go? Ready. All right. Here we go. Number one. You got this. Early, sorry. <laughs> early riser or night owl? Oh, early riser for sure. Not a wide awaker. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Fair enough. Fair I'm like enough. a, I'm like a bug warming up. <laughs> <laughs> Fluffernutter or PB and J? Oh, Fluffernutter. Coffee, tea. Coffee. HGTV or History Channel? <gasps> History. Lake Winnipesaukee or Hampton Beach? Oh, Lake Winnipesaukee. White Mountains or Boston? Oh, White Mountains. Flintstones or Jetsons? Oh, Jetsons. That's a good one. Love that. Slippers. Oh my God, we talk about them all the time. Astro, I say Rumbo all the time. <laughs> <laughs> slippers or socks? Ooh, slippers. Lilacs or lilies? Oh, lily. Uh, lilacs, sorry. I love lilacs. Lilac, lilac. Yeah. Okay, last one. Monopoly or cards? Monopoly. All right. Monopoly ding, ding, ding. Sure. Right. <laughs> Especially the little dog player. <laughs> and always buy Baltic Ave and the other one. I wish I can. Purple one. Everybody land. Oh, on. never give up your, ro your railroads so either. Cheap. Always get your railroads for oh, sure. Oh, the railroads for sure. And the utilities. <laughs> Absolutely. Yes. 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 Well, it was uh, fantastic to have you, Becky. Uh, you uh, were filled with a ton of knowledge that I think is going to be tremendously helpful for our listeners. So thank you for coming on today. We appreciate uh, it. 
Thank you for having me. It's always so Absolutely. fun. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, really, I, I enjoyed it. And it was a pleasure being here. And I hope I helped one person. Yes, if absolutely. you help one you... person, that's <laughs> all we need. That is all oh, we need. Oh, yeah. good. Yeah. And we look forward to having you again, hopefully, <laughs> sometime again this year. Uh, we'll oh, try that'd be you great. The show, so, oh, perfect. I would love perfect. it. Perfect. Perfect. Thanks, Megan. Thanks. Take care. Right. Yep, you too. Bye bye. 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 This has been the Making Money Personal Podcast. If you have any questions about today's show, or suggestions for future shows, be sure to email us at tcupodcast at trianglecu.org. We value your time, so please rate and review us on iTunes or wherever you listen and share with your friends and family on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. Thanks for listening and have a great day.